The Queen made her way into St Michael's Church just across the road from the cathedral, the Catholic Church, where she was greeted by the canon there. Now, Noel has been following the proceedings and the service this morning. Over to you. Thank you, Sarah. And you join us as the Queen says hello to George Irvine, who has been a cub leader for 37 years, and he's going to introduce Her Majesty to a group of young people, scouts and guides from the Roman Catholic tradition and the Church of Ireland tradition. She's been in here. There, there are nine groups of people to meet the Queen here. She started off with members of schools management groups, and then she went on to meet representatives of the business community. And then it was the sporting organizations, uh, GAA, golf, rugby, bowls, and soccer. And then people involved in waterways, fisheries, and tourism, so vital, of course, to the economy uh, of this part of the world. She then moved on to meet representatives from the agriculture community. That's uh, civil servants, officials, and um, farmers, of course. And now she's with George Irvine, as I say, introducing a number of leaders and members of the of the youth organizations a couple more groups to meet and then she'll move on to go outside again and i think there will be a little bit of a walkabout perhaps for the people who've been waiting ever so patiently some of them since half past four this morning would you believe uh, and i spoke to a lot of people at the barriers and they were all more than happy to stand there now the queen meets Gladys O'Callaghan, who represents the Hospice for Children in Kiladis, and she will uh, introduce the voluntary sector members from the Sir Optimists, the British Legion, St Vincent de Paul, the Rotary Club, and the Mothers' Union. So a wide variety of people here. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Canon Noel Batty, who's been with me this morning and this afternoon. Noel, um, th this is so important. That the, to, the walk across the road symbolizes the coming together of the true traditions. Very much so. The, the whole feeling of the thing has, has been very strong throughout the, prep throughout the preparations and, and all through everything that went beforehand. And of course, it's now coming to the fullness of expression at this meeting here in St. Michael's at this particular point. And in the background there, of course, you can hear Helen Hamnell with the St. Michael's Church Choir, and they're singing a piece by uh, John Rutter, The Peace of God, uh, of course, based on the blessing uh, from the uh, morning and evening prayer services. They took out a load of pews to make room for all these people, yes, didn't they? I was absolutely <laughs> flabbergasted when I went over yesterday afternoon. I knew they were moving some furniture, but when I went in, I saw the extent of the work which had gone on, and this, they'd been screwed to the floor, and they left all of this gap. Obviously, tremendous preparation. My, my word for it afterwards was they've certainly uh, slain the fatted calf by way of welcome to, to their neighbours. It was very good. And a word for these spectacular floral arrangements which uh, well, you've seen ladies the... Of, the, uh, of the surrounding parishes were busy putting up yesterday and today. Absolutely spectacular success. Ladies, congratulations to you for that. We've just got a fleeting view there of the uh, lovely murals there up on the left-hand side of the church uh, by Russell, um, an artist from Edinburgh. I must say, when I went into the church, they, after having the sense of the space and, and light within St. Michael's, the other thing that impressed me were those murals. In some ways, they reminded me of a Greek Orthodox church, but there was a great sense of, of space and, uh, and of wonder. It's French Gothic revival is the style of, of St. Michael's, we're right, yeah. told. Whatever that well, is. I'm talking about the paintings. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> I understand. Uh, you were talking about, we saw the organ there, that's been... Uh, Rebuilt in 1990, splendid organ rebuilt by Wells Kennedy, two manual organ, and uh, there's a choir of about 40 voices uh, that Helen Hamill organizes. And she's actually, she's been doing that for 12 years, but she's uh, been involved with music at the church for much longer than that. Let's just leave it there. So that is uh, Jerry Elliott, who's a post office worker introducing Her Majesty to a group of people from the public services, so representing the fire service, the police there, obviously, um, the credit union, 
and the town's newspaper editors. They've done very well to get such a wide spectrum of people. I think Helen was telling me that the oldest person in the choir is 85 years old and the youngest is just 17. So again, you've got a wide, a wide spread of ages. The, the two, uh, the dean of the cathedral and Canon O'Reilly, who's the PP at St. Michael's, have, have been working very hard to establish good relations between the two churches and in, on a wider level between the, the two communities. They undertake all sorts of joint ventures, church walks and talks, and generally just try and bring people together as much as possible. And they say they find they're working with uh, very fertile ground, that uh, there is a, a great move towards better relations, especially amongst the younger people. The, the, the two uh, clergymen were saying that uh, young people don't want any any truck with the baggage of the past. The Queen has a busy couple of days ahead, and then of course she goes back to London, and her next stop on the Jubilee tour is going to be Scotland. We're now with school pupils. That was Adam Shaw, or that is Adam Shaw from Petora, who is introducing children from 14 schools. Perhaps I should give them all a mention, should I? There's the Collegiate Grammar, Mount Lourdes, St. Michael's, St. Joseph's, St. Fancher, Erin Integrated, the Integrated Primary, the uh, Model Primary, Jones Memorial, the Erne Special School, the Elmbrook Special School, Holy Trinity Primary, and Devonish College. So, big smiles from the children as they meet Her Majesty in this big day for the diocese, as the bishop was saying, and a big day, as he also said, for Northern Ireland as a whole. Next stop of the Jubilee Tour will be Scotland. And uh, that's the end of next week, I think. Not that the Queen has any downtime in between. There's a few days in London, then she'll be unveiling a, a memorial to Bomber Command in Green Park, and then it's off to Scotland for a few days. Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, and perhaps elsewhere as well. So a busy tour. They, I, I asked why Enniskillen had been chosen, and one answer I was given was that it was simply the, the most westerly point of the United Kingdom. And they wanted to do a religious service, so St. McCartan's was the choice. It's been a, there we have the, the Dean, Kenneth Hall, and the parish priest, Canon O'Reilly, talking together. They emphasize a lot that they, they have a good relationship themselves and that uh, some other members of the community have been quite surprised at how well they get on with each other when they appear at these joint ventures. So they've been very keen to say that this is a joint enterprise, a joint venture today. This is a day for the diocese, the Roman Catholic diocese, and the Church of Ireland diocese to be seen as one parish together.